You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. Dolphin fans, and welcome to the Same Old Dolphin Show, part of the DolphinsTalk.com podcast network. I'm Josh Katzker. With me today and every day is my brother from the exact same mother, Aaron the Brain. Aaron, say hello to the people. Hello to the people. All right. The bye week is over. It's time for Tua. Tua time comes to Miami to make his, well, it's not really his debut, but to make his first NFL start, it's happening this Sunday at Hard Rock Stadium as the Miami Dolphins host the Los Angeles Rams. Brain, are you fired up or what? Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like. I'm scared and excited at the same time. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. And th- this is a glimpse into what the future of this franchise is. Yeah, it's a really exciting moment here. and But I think it's one, like you said, that has got a lot of people feeling a little bit anxious as well because it's really, this is the this is the big one. Probably not since Ryan Tannehill made his debut has there been a quarterback with the Dolphins where there was this kind of hype and excitement. But I don't, I don't even, I feel like, when Tannehill came through, there wasn't the kind of expectations that there are with Tua. There was hope. There was always hope that Tannehill was going to be the guy, but there wasn't the kind of expectation that there is with Tua. Everybody really seems to be buying, well, not everybody, but a lot of people really seem to be buying into the idea that this is the guy, this is the future, it starts here, and this is the man that's going to lead us to the promised land. So he's coming in with the weight of the Miami Dolphins world upon his shoulders, and we are going to see just how well this young man deals with that pressure. So we're going to get in to our Miami Dolphins Los Angeles Rams game preview right here on the same old Dolphins show today. But before we do that, a quick reminder to everybody, if you haven't done so yet, to head over to Apple Podcasts, uh, to head over to Spotify, to head over to SoundCloud, and subscribe to the same old Dolphins show. Leave us a five-star rating. Leave us a review. It, It helps us out and helps other people discover the show. We appreciate everybody for doing that. Um, We are available anywhere that you find podcasts, so uh, if there is somewhere that you'd like to listen to podcasts and we're not on that platform, drop us a line, send us a tweet. We're on Twitter, at Same Old Dolphins. I'm at Amplified to Rock. He is at Aaron the Brain. That's at A-A-Ron the Brain. You can send us a tweet, a DM, whatever you want to do. Let us know where you'd like to see the podcast, and we'll do our best to make it available on that platform. And of course, every episode of the Same Old Dolphin Show is available on DolphinsTalk.com, which is your one-stop shop for all things Miami Dolphins. So make sure you're visiting DolphinsTalk.com each and every day for all the latest Miami Dolphins news and information, columns, opinions, uh, film analysis, and uh, you know, we've got a YouTube channel over there as well where you may be watching this episode of the Same Old Dolphin Show. You might see the uh, DolphinsTalk.com staff roundtable that the brain and I participated in this week. So we encourage everybody to uh, make sure that you're following at Dolphins Talk uh, on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere as well. All right, brain, let's get into this. This is the big one. Uh, Tua is going to make his debut. And, you know, I think there's a lot of question marks. And we talked about it a little bit on that Dolphins Talk uh, staff roundtable the other day. We talked about how we have no real clue what this offense is going to look like with Tua at the helm. I think we've got, you know, a general idea of the kind of offense that Shan Gailey likes to run. But... 
we have no, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not for sure what kind of wrinkles are going to be uh, implemented and and how things are going to look with with Tua run in the show. Is it going to look a little bit different? Is it going to be maybe not as straightforward? Are we going to be seeing a lot of run pass options, RPOs? Are we going to see that kind of stuff? Are we going to see twists where Lynn Bowden is getting involved and we're going to see some wildcat packages? Um, you know, all of that is up in the air, and and I think. That is going to be something that plays out over the course of a couple of weeks. I don't know that we're necessarily going to see all of the tricks revealed in week one, especially when you're going up against a Los Angeles Rams team that is uh, very, very strong defensively, particularly against the pass. They're very good at, at, at getting pressure on quarterbacks, and they've got a very good secondary as well. They are this is a battle of two of the best defenses in the league when it comes to scoring defense. So let's talk about how the Dolphins offensively are going to cope with the heat that the Los Angeles Rams and Aaron Donald are going to bring. What is Tua going to need to be doing? Are we going to see a lot of uh, quick slants and, and quick releases? Is Tua getting the ball out of his hand quick? Or is uh, Tua going to be spending a lot of time on the ground? in this game, Bryn? Well, I, I think you got to look at the combination of what this offense has been so far through the first six games of the season. And then also look at what Tua excelled at in college. And I think run pass option is going to be part of this. If there's a part of the game where Tua, I'm, well, there there's a few things that Tua is elite at. When you're when you're drafted as highly as he is, you're not elite at just one thing. But one thing that he was truly elite at his entire time in Alabama was his ability to diagnose where to go with the ball quickly and deliver it on time and accurate on those quick slants, particularly on the run pass option. Uh, so I I think they'd be crazy for that to not be part of this offense. It's such a part of virtually every offense in this league that has any quarterback that's any kind of mobile. Uh, so I, I absolutely think that's going to be a part of this offense. I, I'm How significant of a part? I think, you know, that remains to be seen. I think it's going to be a significant portion of the offense, but maybe not the basis of the offense. Uh, I think you're also going to see Tua take some shots downfield. I think when you look at Tua versus Ryan Fitzpatrick, if there's one area that you that really sticks out as far as what's something that Tua can do right away better than Ryan Fitzpatrick, Look, Tua has shown, you know, showed in college that he is not afraid to go for the big play, go for the jugular, and he throws a great deep ball. It's one of the most impressive things about his game, and it's one of the bigger reasons why he was so highly touted coming into the NFL draft. So I think we're going to be taking some shots. But in order to take those shots, they're going to need to do two things. They're going to need to be able to set them up by getting taking the short game and two when they are going to take those shots they're going to need to be able to protect him and that's probably the biggest question mark coming into this because the Dolphins offensive line has done a great job all season long at protecting the passer but the Rams are a different kind of beast when it comes to that than the teams that we have faced thus far and Aaron Donald uh, second in the league in sacks, first in the league in quarterback pressures, and he's not alone on that defensive line. In Michael Brockers, there uh, as another guy that can put pressure. And when you and look, let's face it, you're not blocking Aaron jo uh, Aaron Donald with one guy. Uh, you're you're gonna need multiple guys on him, and that's going to free up other rushers. It's going to put the onus on other guys, uh, particularly. Playing at right tackle, Robert Hunt, which right tackle, by the way, now is the blind side. We're not because Tua is a left handed quarterback. So Robert Hunt has a huge responsibility. He is responsible for protecting Tua's blind side. 
And then on the interior line, where I think the Dolphins have been really at their strongest, especially in pass protection, uh, it's on. It's going to be on Ted Karras and Solomon Kindley and Eric Flowers to really handle uh, Aaron Donald. Uh, the good news is, like I said, those three guys have been rock solid so far. And so this is obviously going to be their biggest test of the season, but I think they're ready for it. And and that's not to say they're going to, going to completely shut down Aaron Donald and he's not going to have an impact on this game because Aaron Donald has an impact on every game that he is in. He's that good. He is that kind of player. He's going to wreak havoc. Uh, but can you limit those plays where he has a major impact? And can you... Can you get rid of or completely eliminate the plays where he just blows the whole thing up really quickly and you have no chance of making it happen? And then in addition to that, the other part of it is that Jalen Ramsey is a pretty darn good shutdown corner and uh, they're going to probably have to attack whoever is on the other side, uh, whoever is not lined up against Jalen uh, Ramsey is probably going to ha- to be their target. They might be, I, I really believe that uh, a guy that is going to be uh, a big part of the game plan this week is Mike Kosicki, who had a goose egg his last time out, but I think, uh, you know, has an opportunity to make some things happen in the middle of the field. So there's a lot of things there as far as what's this Dolphins offense going to look like? What's Tua going to look like? Uh, and, and like you said, we don't really know. We're just going based off of what he looked like in college and what this offense has been. Um, the one thing that, that worries me, uh, aside from the fact that this is a really good, arguably the best pass defense in the league, the Rams, because not only are they uh, sixth in the league in, in sack percentage, but they've given up the fewest yards per pass attempt in the entire NFL, is... Tua, if he had one weakness in college, uh, from my from my point of view, and I, you've heard it from Nick Saban and from others, is that he will sometimes hold on to the ball too long. And it's not holding on to the ball too long because he's unsure of where to go with it. He sometimes holds on to the ball too long because he doesn't like to throw the ball away. And in the in at this level. You have to be able to do that because you cannot afford to to gamble so much. He's got a gunslinger mentality, but you cannot afford to gamble as much as he gambled at times against the really good defenses that he played in college and he got himself into trouble. And it's going to be that much worse if he gambles against really good NFL defenses. Yeah, I think if there's one area where the Dolphins sort of have an advantage here, it is the fact that what their offense is going to look on look like on Sunday is such an unknown. The fact that they could pull literally anything out of the hat and it's going to be difficult for the Rams to be properly prepared for it. So there are a lot of possibilities. Now, obviously, are the Dolphins going to be able to completely implement, um, you know, a system that is based heavily on RPOs over the course of a couple of weeks? Probably not. But then again, we don't know how much work on that they've been doing before this. You know, we don't know how much of that is is hidden in the offense, and we just haven't seen it. This has been a pretty straightforward offensive, you know, offensive attack that the Dolphins have have moved forward with, um, with with its Patrick leading the charge. So with the switch to Tua, I think it is an opportunity for the Dolphins to catch the Rams off guard, and that is sort of the one thing that the Dolphins have. I guess it's kind of the X factor in this game is that... What the Dolphins' offense looks like is a mystery to us, which means it's going to be a mystery to uh, Sean McVay and and everybody on the Rams sideline and everybody on the field for the Rams. So I, I think the Dolphins are going to have a few tricks up their sleeve, and we'll see if they are able to implement those tricks in such a way that they can find success 
offensively, particularly in the second half of the game, once the Rams have had an opportunity to sort of adjust to what it, whatever the Dolphins come out and throw at them. It's a, this is a situation where you could see the Dolphins coming out and, and, and landing a couple of big punches early because they're coming in with a completely new offense, and that once the Rams are able to sort of adjust to that and make some adjustments, that it becomes a different game. But we've also seen in the past when, a, when an offense is completely brand new, I'm talking go all the way back to 2008, it took, it took several weeks before teams were able to adjust to what the Dolphins were doing with the Wildcat. I'm not saying that this Dolphins offense is going to look like that, but again, it's an X factor in this game. Let's go to the other side of the ball because the off the offense of the Rams is pretty potent, although not perhaps quite as strong as it was a couple of years ago when they went to the Super Bowl. It is still pretty good, and they've got a pretty good running back by committee. They're one of those teams that has a running back by committee sort of mentality, led by Daryl Henderson. You've also got Malcolm Brown, and it seems less and less like Cam Akers is involved, but he's there as well. And then they're also very good at distributing the ball, and we're seeing uh, Jared Goff throw the ball to Cooper Cup and and Robert Woods, and and lately uh, Josh Reynolds getting involved to the offense for the Rams. Uh, They've also got a couple of tight ends. Tyler Higby is injured. I don't know if he's going to play in this game on Sunday, but they also have uh, Robert uh, Everett as well. The the other tight end. This is a deep team here with with a lot of tricks up their sleeves and, and with Coop and a cup and Woods, who are fantastic route runners. You also have Woods, who is often getting involved in the running game as well. So this is a multifaceted attack that the Rams bring offensively. The Dolphins have improved in that defensive front, and we know that their secondary has been pretty lights out since Byron Jones has come back. So what is the key in this game, Brain? to the Dolphins shutting down, or at least slowing down, this potent Rams offense? I think the key is going to be shutting down those receivers. Um, I think, but but I think ultimately the biggest key is going to be stopping the running game. Uh, because everything that the Rams do offensively is kind of built off of that running game. They do a whole lot of play action and Jared Goff is outstanding out of the play action, but he's rather mediocre when it's not play action. So the only way that you can stop them from doing that play action is by stopping the run early in, in the, the down and distance, getting them in the down and distance where you're not fooled by uh, play action and that, and you're kind of taking that away from them. And I think that's a huge part of the defensive game plan. And then as far as those receivers, I really think I'm interested to see how the dolphins attack this because while Nick Needham has done a good job in the last two games in the slot, uh, if if he's matched up against Cooper Cup or Robert Woods in the slot, or particularly Cooper Cup, who I think is just a really savvy route runner and a very difficult cover for any quarterback uh, for any corner uh, on those underneath routes, let alone uh, you know Nick Needham, who look I I love the way Nick Needham plays, and he is just your your classic. Uh, example of an overachiever an undrafted free agent that you get that gets the absolute most out of uh his body and his his physical ability but I'm taking Cooper Cup in that matchup all day so if I'm the Rams and the Dolphins are content to leave Byron Jones and Xavier Howard just on the outside i I'm not sold in what I've seen from Noah Igbenogany. I'm not sold that uh, Nick Needham is some shutdown corner on the inside. I'm not. I'm not going to be scared of of Brandon Jones there. So I would be putting Cooper Cup. I'd be trying to get him in the slot, matched up against a cornerback that is not named Xavier Howard and not named Byron Jones. And look. Eric Rowe 
should be going up against Tyler Higby. He's got a hand injury. He was limited uh, in practice on Wednesday. I haven't seen uh, Thursday's uh, injury report, but I believe Tyler Higby is going to play. And if that's the case, and regardless of whether it's Higby or Everett, uh, Eric Rowe has been tasked with being the guy that shuts down opposing tight ends. And he's done an amazing job. And there's no reason to take him out of that role. And so it really comes down to if the Rams are going to put Cooper Cup in the slot, or maybe they, you know, have Robert Woods lined up in the, in the slot from time to time, do the Dolphins adjust defensively their coverage to him? Or do they say, look, we're going to get it done with who we got. We're going to get it done with Brandon Jones, with Noah Igbenogany, and with uh, with Nick Needham. And I think that's a huge matchup in this game. Uh, and if they're unable to do it and they have to adjust, uh, then, you know, what's the what's the game plan there? Is it Xavier Howard goes and, and shadows him? Uh, is it maybe Bobby McCain? You, you put him in that back in a role that he he played a couple of years ago as a really premier slot corner uh, and and you kind of make yourself a little bit weaker on the on the back end uh, deep in the secondary where Bobby McCain has been arguably the best safety in the league. He's got allowed a 0.0 passer rating thus, thus far in the season. Um, so I, I think the way that the Dolphins choose to defend, the Rams passing attack, particularly Cooper Cup, I think is a huge, huge uh, part of the chess match in this game. But ultimately, the biggest piece of it is stopping the run. And then the other part of it is, can the Dolphins put any pressure on Jared Goff? Uh, This is a really, really good, arguably the best offensive line in the league. Uh, this Rams offensive line. Jared Goff doesn't get sacked very much, uh, getting sacked just over once a game. Uh, and they do a heck of a job block, you know, run blocking and getting out there on the edge. So it's it's going to be a test for this Dolphins defense. I'm really interested to see it because this Dolphins defense has been downright elite the last two times they've been on the field. But how much of it is the competition because you played the jets and you played a really beat up San Francisco team. Jimmy Garoppolo looked absolutely awful in that game. You're going to see them up against a really good, or at least maybe not a really good offense, but a solid offense, a competent offense with a really good game plan or offensive game plan, because you know, Sean McVay is going to have them prepared uh, what's this defense going to look like against a real offense this week? Are they still going to be playing at an elite level or are, or has what we've seen in the last two games been a bit of a mirage? Yeah. And this is some, this is an area where the dolphins have another big opportunity, right? We've seen them beat, uh, a 49ers team that was very, very beat up. We've seen them beat up on the Jaguars, and we saw them beat up on the Jets. But we have not yet seen them manage to win a game against a very, very tough opponent. Um, Yes, I understand. The 49ers are a tough opponent, but the the 49ers were beat up. They were playing with half of a Jimmy Garoppolo and and C.J. Beathard. The the, the team was in very bad shape, and their their defense was just a shambles in that game. A corner right off the practice squad that got absolutely eight for lunch. Yeah, so, I mean, we have not yet seen a Dolphins team go up against an opponent that is at the height of their powers, um, and maybe the Rams are not their absolute best that they've been, but the Rams are a legitimate team, five and two, coming in uh, following a twenty-four to ten victory on Monday Night Football against the Chicago Bears. This is an opportunity for the Dolphins to really make a statement, and uh, you know, you add in the Tua fact as well. It's it's an interesting matchup, and I think it's a juicy one on Sunday. And I think there is, and uh, you know, like I said, just an opportunity for this team to make a big statement. We got to talk about special teams in this game because special teams is is going to play a big role, I think. And especially when you've got two teams that are 
you know, at the top of the heap when it comes to special teams. Jason Sanders was just named the AFC Special Teams Player of the Month for October with his perfect month. Uh, but you've also got Johnny Hecker on the other side. You, you know, you were talking about punting. We got punting talk on the same old Dolphin show this week. Johnny Hecker, this guy's unbelievable. He's constantly putting the ball inside the 10-yard line. He did this if you watch the game on Monday against the Bears. The Bears were constantly uh, starting very deep in their own territory. And then when you've got Nick Foles as your starting quarterback, that team is just a mess right now. But the the Rams shut them down, and, you know, they they were certainly aided by the fact that Hecker was putting them in bad bad positions. And so is that something, are, you know, is Tua going to be constantly facing 90-yard fields? Uh, we're going to find out if the defense can even stop the Rams' offense. Rams are also uh, making a change at kicker this week. They, they, their previous place kicker was Samuel Sloman. Uh, he had been struggling, so the Rams a couple uh, a little over a week ago signed Kai Forbath, and then after Sloman's struggles continued on Monday night, the, uh, the Rams cut bait, and Kai Forbath is going to be the new place kicker for the Los Angeles Rams. So that's just something else to keep an eye on when we uh, see the two teams on the field this Sunday. So we are now at the point of the show where we want to listen to the listeners and hear their hot takes. So we are going to listen to the listeners' hot takes, and then we will make our predictions for this game. But before we do that, we need to talk about our good friends at Manscaped and Brain Autumn is in the air. Maybe not so much in South Florida, but where I am in central New York, autumn is most definitely in the air. And Manscaped is here to ensure that you don't carve your pumpkins when you're grooming. Of course, by pumpkins, we actually mean your boys downstairs. In fact, Manscaped is on a mission to change the way you approach caring for your balls. And great news. They just released their products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So now you can care for your boys down under, down under. And listen, we've, we've all had these experiences where you've been grooming yourself and, and you know, you're, you're putting yourself in a weird position to get things done or you're using the wrong equipment because you don't have the right tools for the job. So it's, it's getting very frustrating because it's not working the way you want to. Listen, Manscaped's got the Lawnmower 3.0. And let's not forget, it's the best trimmer for your butt, your balls, and your body. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer offers a replaceable ceramic braid with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce grooming accidents. Nobody likes a grooming accident, Bryn. No. They've also got their new Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, which uses the same skin safe technology when you're trimming those delicate nose hairs of yours. And I know how much that is an issue for you, Bryn. So you need to get yourself a weed whacker. So maybe we can talk to our friends over at Manscaped and we can get you set up with the weed whacker so that you can uh, tell everybody all about it. And of course, you can also get your crop care kit, which includes the crop preserver ball deodorant. And everybody knows that pumpkin spice lattes and ball deodorant go hand in hand. We got the crop cleanser body wash, the crop mop ball wipes. Listen, you don't want to stink when you're sitting around that Thanksgiving dinner. Halloween is, is coming up probably by the time you're listening to this. It's, it's either it's coming up tomorrow. It's right. It's time. And right after Halloween is Thanksgiving. And before you know it, it's Christmas and Hanukkah and, and, and Kwanzaa and, and New Year's. Folks, you got to do yourself a favor and head over to Manscaped and get the Manscaped Refined Cologne which is a cost-effective way to smell Sorry, clean and fr Siri, not now. I'm doing the Manscaped read. This is what I get for getting an Apple Watch. She's always interrupting me. Listen, get this refined cologne. It's a cost-effective way to smell clean and fresh for your date, whether it's at Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve. Listen, these formulations are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free. I don't even know what parabens are, but it's paraben-free. So what you know is, you know that your manhood is in good hands with Manscaped. And the best news of all, 
is that you can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the promo code Dolphins Talk. So go to manscaped.com, enter the code Dolphins Talk, get 20% off and free shipping, and make your balls a priority this fall. All right, Brain, should we talk about some hot takes from the listeners? You ready? We had a bunch of them this week. In fact, so many, we, could, we can't even read all of them this week because there's that many of them. So uh, we had a bunch of responses on Facebook and on Twitter this week. Here we go, Brain. You let me know if there's good ones that you want to respond to. Well, so listen, we just did the Manscaped read, so we might as well start with this comment from Jay Ranella, who says that Jakeem Grant finally shows up with some deep balls. Yes, I like it. I like it. Uh, Tua, that's what he's here for. Go throw in the deep balls. We're going vertical. Uh, yep. We got Taking care of your boys and taking them, taking care of them deep down the field. That's absolutely right. And we've got a, a a contribution from friend of the podcast, friend of the show, Tammy Lippert says Tua helps open our running game and we blow out the Rams. Fins up. Eugene Stair says that Tua goes big time vertical for a couple of touchdowns. So following up on that, Lamont Perry says, I think Tua and Preston Williams are going to have a big game with the deep ball with Parker and money making Mike G showing out also with really big catches for us to clinch the game. Fins up. Tua time. Hopefully Devontae will be able to play this game. He uh, was uh, limited in practice today with a with that groin injury. Uh, there was a time when I would have said that that 100% means he's not playing on Sunday, but it seems like he's turned a corner, and I expect him to tough it out and hopefully have a big game this Sunday. Uh, Brian Gordon, oh, this is a this is a this is a hot take right out of the Aaron the Brain playbook. He says Tua benched. Fitz brings us back from three touchdowns down. Oh. That is a hot take. James Clark says Tua completes 24 out of 30 passes for 320 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and gains 45 yards rushing with another touchdown. My goodness. Austin Peters says Tua comes out struggling, then gets his rhythm and balls out. Dolphins win 31-24. That's a realistic one, so not terribly hot. Here's a hot one. Matt Thomas Matt Breida goes for 130 yards on 18 carries with a pair of touchdowns. The 18 carries is the hardest part to believe in that. Yeah, that that maybe listen, maybe he's foreseen an injury or something to Miles Gaskin. I don't know. Or maybe the offense completely looks different with Tua at the helm. Let's go to the tweets. Uh, at Captain Handsome says Tua will struggle at times, have an okay start. They'll likely lose, and it won't mean he's a bust. That's correct. That is a correct take. Tommy Fasano says, with everyone so focused on Tua, I see Gaskin having the best game of his career. So somebody's going to be right and somebody's going to, well, listen, you could both be wrong, but, (laughs) uh, you know, hopefully at least one of you will be right about that. Jason Hogarth says, Tua will throw one pass with his right hand. I like that. That is an interesting and unique take. I like it. Uh, At at GatorGrad 929 says Tua will get sacked, but get up and keep it moving. That is a big one. That is a big one. I don't know that it's necessarily the hottest take in the world that he's going to get sacked, but I like the idea that he's going to get up. This is the, That's really one of the moments that we're all waiting for is to see how he responds to getting hit for the first time. At Haitian Doll Fan 1 says the offense will put up a 40-burger with an extra side of win. I like that. Like that Haitian doll fan. At Mondo Man 12, Preston Williams will be Tua's most targeted receiver on Sunday. I think that's a possibility whether Devontae Parker plays or not, quite frankly. Um, because if Devontae plays, he's probably getting paired with Jalen Ramsey for a lot of this one. So it makes sense that Preston Williams might, might see a lot of action. Uh, Eldon Jensen on 11-1, number 11 will catch a touchdown pass from number one. That's a fun, that's a fun one. I like that one, Eldon. I like that. At Occam's Razor 42, while everyone is looking the other way, this ends up being the Lynn Bowden coming out party. 
I'd be fine with that. I think that's a possibility, although I think maybe that's something that we'll see more in the Arizona game in a couple weeks down the line as opposed to this week, but it's a possibility. I like it. Uh, Edgy HD says Emmanuel Ogba gets more sacks than Aaron Donald. There you go. That's a I, very you know, good. Some take. love for the defense. Yeah, on these uh, takes. And, you know, everybody is very you know focused on the, what the offense is doing, and understandably so uh, with uh, with the Tua thing going on this week. Uh, Mike W. Ferguson at Mike W. Ferguson says Xavier Howard makes it five straight games with an interception. I think that's a possibility. Here's some more defensive love for you, Brain. And then this next one is my absolute favorite, I think, of all of the all of the tweets that we got. It comes from at Finn's tweets. Tua throws for 500 yards and five TDs. Then Ariana Grande DMs me and that she wants to hang out. Hashtag Finn's up. Which one's more realistic? Uh, you know, anybody's guess, but uh, you know, if I had to hand out an award for best, best hot take of the week, that would be the one. (laughs) And mostly because of the Ariana Grande thing at the end of it. I, I, it's fantastic. Good. All right, brain, it's time to make some predictions. So talk me through it. What's going to happen this Sunday when your Miami Dolphins take on the Los Angeles Rams? Look, first and foremost, when it comes to feeling the pressure of this moment, that is the least of my concerns when it comes to Tua. Remember that this guy was a true freshman who played extremely sparingly throughout his freshman year just in mop-up duty and then came in in the second half of the national title game with his team behind because Jalen Hurts got benched because the offense couldn't do anything against one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the country. And he had, he was getting the backup reps the entire year. And he came in in the second half of the national championship game and led his team to victory. This is who Tua is. I don't think the moment is going to be too big for him. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about him coming in and not being prepared. I believe that Brian Flores would not be throwing him out there if he didn't believe that Tua had put in the necessary work and that he wasn't capable. Uh, and I believe that Tua is doing all of the right things in the in the two weeks that is, that has led up to this. All the reports are is that he's you know, studying film nonstop on the Rams and spent the entire time uh, throughout the bye week just watching game film on the Rams defense. All signs point to Ryan Fitzpatrick being a great help and a great mentor to him. I fully expect that Tua is going to be ready. But this is a really good Rams defense, particularly against the pass. And I don't know how good this Dolphins offense is. I don't know that this Dolphins offensive line can handle Aaron Donald. Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to run the ball with very much effectiveness. And if Tua gets put into some situations where he's put under pressure and he tries to do too much, I won't be surprised if Tua makes some rookie mistakes. It is his first start in the National Football League. Uh, Remember that. And so I think there's a lot of reasons why uh, this could be an uphill battle for him. Now, that said, I think he's also going to flash some – we're going to see some wow moments where we're going to say, this is why we drafted him. I like where this team is going. I like what the future looks like with Tua. And I think we're going to have to take the good with the bad, as you always have to do when you're playing a young quarterback, particularly a rookie quarterback. And – I think that's going to be the case. The question is, can we limit the mistakes and can we maximize the opportunities? I mean, that's really what every NFL game comes down to. And 
I think this is going to be a really close game. I think you're talking about two defenses that are playing at a very high level, that are playing with an extreme amount of confidence right now, and uh, two special teams units that are helping out and playing com complementary football in, in that regard, too. I think this is going to be a close game, a relatively lower scoring game, but not like not a 17 to 16, like race to 17 kind of game, but maybe like a race to 23 or 24. And like the, I've gone back and forth on this game. I literally, literally in this moment, I don't know who I'm going to pick uh, to win this game. But I, I, I said a few weeks ago uh, when the dolphins had Seattle coming in, that I thought that was game was going to be a lot closer than the experts thought it was going to be. But I wasn't ready to pick Miami to win that game because they hadn't shown me that they can beat a really good football team. Even when intangible things like team coming from the West Coast to the East Coast at a one o'clock start, a team coming off of a short week, we're coming off of a bye week. Even with those kinds of intangibles uh, that seem to be in the Dolphins' favor. This team has not shown me that they can beat a really good team. And I believe that the Rams are a really good team. I've, I, you know, we did the round table and uh, Big E was talking about how, you know, the Rams are a five and two, but what kind of five and two are they? They've beaten some, some really bad teams from the NFC East or whatever. But I want to remind you that they're a bogus pass interference call away from being a six and one team with a victory over Buffalo. Uh, and a Buffalo team uh, that at that point of the season was undefeated. So uh, I believe that this is a good Rams team. It's also a Rams team that's two years removed for being in the Super Bowl. Uh, so this is not like the Rams are good out of nowhere. They took a little bit of a step back last year, but they look like they're back on track. I think this is a playoff team. It's a legitimate contending team that the Dolphins are playing. And until the Dolphins prove that they can beat a team like this, I just can't pick them, even though I think there's there are going to be opportunities to win this game. And I'm not going to be surprised if the Dolphins win this game. And I think it's going to be very close. I'm picking the Rams to win this game 24 to 23. Helps to unmute yourself. Very right. important. I see it being a very similar situation. I, I, I see this uh, very similarly to, to you where, although I, I, I really do believe that this is a Dolphins team that is going to come out and it's going to be electric. And it's going to be electric at the, at the top. There's going to be a lot of energy in the building. Um, it is going to be as loud as 13,500 people can make a building. Because it's going to be, uh, that, that crowd is going to be electric for the debut of Tua Tungavailoa on Sunday. And I think the Dolphins are going to come out with some tricks up their sleeves. Uh, not going to be, you know, maybe not crazy, but they're going to be doing just enough to keep the Rams just enough off balance that I think the Dolphins are going to be able to build a little bit of a lead for themselves early in this game and 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 probably take it into halftime. I can see the Dolphins going into halftime with something like a 17-10, 17-7 lead. And then in the second half, the Rams coming out and, and making some adjustments and and drawing even and that you're going to have these two teams really going at it and we're going to see the Dolphins in the fourth quarter seeing if they have what it takes to win a close game and I think we're going to see the experience of the Rams in this situation be just enough to see them through and put them over the finish line. And I think Kai Forbath is going to hit a game-winning field goal for the Rams uh, as, as time expires. And the Los Angeles Rams will defeat your Miami Dolphins 27-24, to which is going to be disappointing. It's going to be another one of those situations where the Dolphins were in it with a tough team but fell just short. But the biggest takeaway is going to be Tua Tungavailoa comes in, he plays well, he takes hits, he gets up, and he's fine. 
and the Dolphins are able to march on with their new franchise quarterback making a very solid first career start. And that is going to be the biggest takeaway here. Uh, You know, I, I am still of the opinion that anything that happens this season is gravy for the Miami Dolphins. If they go to the playoffs, if they win a playoff game, amazing, fantastic, that's great. But this, the rest of this season is about evalu- continuing to evaluate what we have in all of our positions, but primarily evaluating what we have in this new starting quarterback. So that's how I see it. And that, I think, is going to wrap us up for this preview episode of the Same Old Dolphin Show. As always, make sure you are following us on all the social media channels. Uh, Amplified to Rock, at Amplified to Rock on Twitter, at Aaron the Brain. That's at A.A. Ron the Brain. The show is at Sam Old Dolphins. Many of you are following us. We appreciate that. And we also invite you to go over to Facebook.com slash Sam Old Dolphins and give the Facebook page a like. Uh, so many people interacting over there um, in all the various Dolphin fan groups, but interacting with us on the page and leaving their one hot takes. We ask for them every week. So uh, we, we hope that you'll join us over there and participate. As always, download, rate, review, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, anywhere you get your podcasts, you can find us. And make sure you're visiting DolphinsTalk.com each and every day. It is your one-stop shop for all things Miami Dolphins. We will be back early next week to recap Tua's first start. And hopefully it will be full of many, many, many positive things. There will probably be some negatives. There will probably be some hiccups along the way. But it's an exciting time to be a Miami Dolphins fan, everybody. So um, let's just sit back, relax, and try to enjoy the ride, even if it's a little bit bumpier than we are hoping that it's going to be. Brian, any parting words for the folks? No, I, it's to a time. Let's let's see it. I'm excited, and uh, we'll be back on to a Tuesday to give you the review of all things Tua and the Miami Dolphins, uh, whether it's a win or a loss. This this matchup against the Rams. Absolutely. So we will see you on to a Tuesday. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. We will talk to you again next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Go Dolphins!